shit. The truth will set you JT needs a haircut here, JT Alfalfa here, bringing you a brand new video. Let's hop right into this video. Make sure you guys stick to the video and I'm going to be giving a bunch of huge shout outs to some brand new channel members. Also, keychains and bottle openers going live this week at JTSuits.com, but as you guys can see from the title, this is just going to be a more laid back, chill vlog because I want to talk about, you know, the truth, bro. Like, not a lot of people like to talk about stuff that they're not good at. I get that. I totally get that. Um, I was not good at my Navy job being an aviation mechanic. I joined the Navy as an AM, got attached to an anti-submarine helicopter squadron, HSM 77, first out of North Island, then we got transferred to Itsugi, Japan, did two deployments, one nine month and one six month, one of them to the Middle East and one of them to Southeast Asia. Um, that's pretty much the backstory. I was, but like I said, I was an AM and my command and my squadron really didn't know that I wasn't that good at my job until the very end of my contract because when you join a squadron there's a thing called the plane captain branch all of naval aviation doesn't matter if you're fixed wing props helicopters rotary wherever um most squadrons are going to have a plane captain branch or a line shack it's where you do all the wash jobs you know you wash your aircraft it's where people it's people do all the hand signals out of there uh, launching and recovery of the aircraft you drive the tow tractor around, you move aircraft to and from the flat line in the hangar bay, um, and like I said, daily inspections and turnaround visual inspections. So for about the first three years, I really, really exceeded. I did really well in the line shack. I went from E2 all the way up to E5. I got all my qualifications. I became a day check supervisor. I was killing it. I crushed it. I loved it. My last year of my contract, they then sent me to the aviation mechanic, the airframe shop. Um, and I was an E5 at this point and I just sucked, dude. Like I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like I know I was just really, really bad at working on an aircraft. I think some of it was because of my inexperience in my life growing up. I didn't have a lot of confidence and there's also a huge amount of pressure in naval aviation. You're, if you mess something up, you're the pilot and air crew's lives are in your hands. If you mess something up torque a bolt wrong or do safety wire wrong or cotter don't cotter keep if you lose anything fod whatever um that's literally the pilot and air crew's lives so i was trying to learn i was doing the best i can it just never clicked for me man it never really clicked and i get a lot of people that worry about hey what if i'm not good at my job are they going to kick me out or are they going to give me another job what are they going to do well luckily for my circumstance i was already like really shit hot in the line shack. That's how I made E5 for under three years. Um, Cause I was just really, really good at being a plane captain and launching and recovering aircraft and doing daily and turnaround inspections. So by the time I got to my shop, they're like, damn. I mean, I don't know what they said. I imagine it probably wasn't anything good, but I was just like, you know, basically what they did with me, I didn't really do any too crazy maintenance at that point because I was getting out of the Navy anyway. So I would do, you know, seven day inspections, 14 day inspections. All that stuff is really simple. So I never really did any crazy complicated phase inspections or flight control, troubleshooting, um, nothing super crazy with my squadron. That was just my circumstance. If you guys are joining the Navy though, and you're new, and you're just not getting it or you're not clicking as long as you're trying as long as they see that you're giving a hundred percent 110 percent you're showing up early you're staying late you're trying to grasp the concepts you're trying to learn if it's just not clicking you're not good at your job but you're a good sailor there's a chance that they'll probably put you in a spot or a position where you're not going to do any harm right so we had this guy in our squadron he was a petty officer first class been in the navy 15 years just didn't just really bad didn't know shit, wasn't good at anything. Like me, I was good at being a plane captain. That saved me, that helped me. This guy was just, anything he touched, <laughs> it, got, it was turned to not gold, it was terrible. So they pretty much put him in safety. They were, he was like the safety petty officer and he was in the gee dunk and he did this and did that and went to the tool room and ordered parts. And like, they're gonna 
put people that just aren't good or aren't getting it in positions where they're not gonna hurt the squadron or where they're not gonna hurt anybody. Now, if you're not getting it in like A school or C school, and like you're failing your schooling in your, in your classes, then that's when you get sent to a new job. Like for aviation mechanic, hardly anyone can fail AM A school. It's in Pensacola, Florida. Like maybe one out of 100 person one out of 200. I hardly heard of anyone ever failing AM school. So for the more complicated jobs in the Navy, like if you're dropping out or failing your classes before you even get to the fleet, they will reassign you a new job. They might be needs of the Navy and just send you wherever, or you might have the pick of a couple different jobs that you qualify for. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you get out to the fleet, you get through all your training and you just don't get it, or you're not grasping it, or you keep messing up, but you're trying really hard, they're probably gonna send you TAD if you're new. They might send you temporary assigned duty. That might be to the galley to crank where you're gonna do clean dishes for like 10 hours. They could send you to security, you know, where you'll just patrol the base or do something like that. They could send you to material control or to the tool room or to supply where you're gonna order parts or, you know, help with unreps or vert reps. Or they can send you to a completely different division where you're just gonna be doing a completely different job, the one that you didn't even sign up to the Navy to do. But yeah, guys, for all those people that are worrying about if you're not, if you're gonna be good at your job or if you're gonna suck, whatever, like, don't worry about that stuff, man. Like, like I said, I was really, really bad at, at my job being an aviation mechanic, but luckily, with squadrons, I was really good in the plane captain branch and being a PC and a LSE. So they'll find a place for you, hopefully. Um, just don't be a shitbag. And it don't like give up and just be like, oh man, like I wanna get out of the Navy, I suck, I hate this. You can't excel at everything. You can only try your hardest, man, and do the best that you can. And there's other things in the Navy, luckily, that you can do. There's a lot of different little jobs, a lot of divisions, a lot of temporary duties. Nowadays though, as a civilian, luckily, you know, I did learn a, a couple things working on the helicopters and I got some confidence working with tools. So like, I never would have installed my exhaust on my motorcycle that I have now. I never even would have attempted that if it wasn't, you know, for the Navy and being an aviation mechanic. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I hope, you know, this um, answered some people's questions or at least made you feel a little better or give you a little more confidence. Um, thank you so much for all the support. We're on the road to 150,000 subscribers, man. We're gaining a lot of subscribers every freaking day. It's so awesome. And I want to give huge shout outs right now to some of the brand new channel members. My channel is one of the first military channels to be able to be sponsored. You guys can sponsor my channel now, just like Twitch. You can sub to a channel on Twitch. You can now sponsor my channel through YouTube. It's pretty awesome. Huge shout out to Tommy Steele, Tyler Evans, Nathan, Andrew Walsner, Riley Patterson, Andrea Rivera, and then also the guys that became members uh, yesterday and the day before. Um, Nikki, Eddie, Ray, John, Frankie, Steven, and Mikey. Thank you guys so much, man. That's freaking awesome. If you guys are channel members now, make sure you hop in when I do live streams. I'm going to be doing sponsor only mode sometimes where it'll be easier for you guys to interact with the chat. And you guys get some special emotes and emojis for the streams and your name is a different color. So um, pretty awesome. See you guys very soon. Brand new videos every day. Video every day for August, B-E-D-A. Um, I got to go run the dogs workout. It's been super hot here, so I got to wait till it gets really late like seven, eight o'clock, and then we go. Let's get it. Papa? Gray? What in the world, Missy? You want belly rub? What are you doing? You want belly? What are you doing? There she goes, biting his freaking Achilles. She's trying to troll him. Gray, you're a freaking troll. That's how she gets the, the play fight started. She goes for his Achilles tendon, and then the fight begins. You guys are crazy, bro. You guys are wild.
Alright, I don't know what the hell is going on here.